And uh, I know the rapture's coming soon, but I'm glad we're still here doing the work of the Lord. Amen. Well, they've already started my clock. John 11. John 11, we'll go back to where we were this morning and uh, preach on that a little bit. John 11, 5, 6, and we'll just read the last three verses to kick us off again. Uh, I know everybody that wasn't in here this morning has already watched it on the live stream, so you're up to date, and uh, we don't even have to. <laughs> now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, and when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was, and after that saith to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. Amen. Delayed but not denied. Final part. <laughs> Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I, it might be delayed, but I'm not denied. Amen. It might be, come on, look at him and say, I might be on, I'm not dead. It's just a delay. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Thank you for everything you are, everything you've done, and everything you're about to do in the house. How blessed we are to be known as the people of God. Thank you, Lord, that we're a light for a dark world. I pray that you'd speak to me, Lord, and as you're speaking to me and those listening in, that they would be blessed for by what you're preaching to me tonight. In the wonderful name of Jesus, and everybody shout in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together quickly and just give him a great praise as we're seated in his presence. Thank you for responding to the praise of God in this place. Amen. Lazarus has died. And it's where we left him this morning. He is dead in a tomb. Martha is ticked off, bitter, mad. She's been telling God what to do if you'd have been here. Mary also is frustrated, but we found out. It's kind of where we ended a little bit. Mary also in her frustrations, comes to Jesus. Uh, however, she doesn't come with the same attitude, the same posture. But when she got to Jesus, uh, the Bible says she knelt before him. Uh, she threw herself down and began to worship because great faith uh, always worships God. We learned that a few Sundays ago, uh, that faith uh, worships God. It is that reason. That's why we praise God is because it's what moves God. Praise will get God moving. Amen. Praise will get God, puts God into motion. I, I told you a, a few weeks ago about faith. Remember why we wave our hands? Does anybody remember why we wave our hands? Well, I'm glad y'all can't remember. I could preach the same thing about every other two weeks. Amen. Y'all are saving me a lot of time. Amen. It's because we're moving a mountain. Amen. Because the faith as a grain of mustard seed. Remember we said faith is not the size of a grain of mustard seed. But faith is as. It's the potential in that seed. And Brother Caleb was talking to me today at lunch, and uh, he said, you know, I went home, I was looking at that. He said, do you realize that that seed, a mustard seed, which is the least of all seed, they put it down half an inch down into the ground. He said, so you got the least of all seeds half an inch in the ground. He says, now if you were to apply that same mathematics to a human being, he said, in the ratio of the size of the seed to the human being, he said, that would be 82 foot, am I right? 82 feet of dirt stacked on top of your head. How, how tall is this ceiling in here? 25? All right. Sister Mandy says it's 25. We'll measure it after church. See how good she is. 25. So you got to go three times and add a little bit on top. That's how much dirt is sitting on your head. I said, I wonder how much pressure that is. He said it would be about 4.5 tons. Dude's pretty smart. So you've got 4.5 tons, we'll round up, 5 tons of pressure on you. That's how you feel when you come to the house of the Lord sometimes, amen? Pressure down with an 82-foot mountain. But if you have faith and you begin to move, that's what happens. You begin to move and you begin to, and something begins to happen in the atmosphere. That's why when we come in, we don't sit still. Faith always worships God. Faith, great faith isn't, it ain't based on the fact that I got 82 feet of dirt and four and a half tons of pressure. I've come into the house of the Lord and there's only one way to move it and that is by lifting up my hands and giving him praise. Amen? Faith, let me tell you, praise and worship moves God. When he created the earth, he's up in heaven. Let's do this. Pull that chair out there. I'm going to show you what was going on in heaven. Sit down. You, you be God. No, I'm going to be God tonight. Amen. And, and God, the Bible says, surrounded by angels. I need some angels. Come on up here. So if you feel like you're an angel. I know you are. Come on. 
Yeah, come on, the way y'all post on Facebook, all y'all think about is Jesus all the time. Uh, come on, there it is. There. Brother Jared's the only angel. There was a whole lot more than Brother Jared. I need some angels. Come on, come on, young people. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Fast, 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 fast. We're going to be here all night. They're already complaining about me preaching too long. Surround me. Just surround me. Walk around. And there, you know what the angels are doing up there in heaven? What are they doing? They're worshiping God, right? They're saying things like, holy, holy, holy. They're not saying it like that. They're saying, holy, holy, holy. They're worshiping God. They're worshiping God. Holy, holy. And as they, and God is sitting up there because this is what he likes. I am holy. I am holy. I am holy. And it was in this atmosphere of worship uh, that God stood up uh, and said, let there be light. He created not out of silence. He created out of worship. Uh, come on. If you need God to say something and if you need God to speak, uh, you know how you do it? You get up and you say, holy, 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 holy. And God's got to get up off the floor oh, and lean over heaven and say, let there be light in Matthew Tuttle's situation. Because worship is what moves God. That's why moving in praise is not Pentecostal. It's script. The, the angels aren't Pentecostals. Come on, somebody. It's scriptural. Motion in the house of God is not linked to the genre of Christianity. I say that all the time because I'm sick of it. Well, Y'all just do that because you're Pentecostal. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What we do because we're Pentecostal is eat peanut brittle. Right? And go out to eat after every service. That's what we do because we're Pentecostal. That ain't linked in the Bible. You don't have to eat peanut brittle, go to heaven, but Lord, it's good. And now they got this walnut brittle. It's, oh. That's and sunflower seed brittle. Somebody just say sunflower seed. You're banned. You're banned. I, I'm sorry. I just revoked your membership. Sunflower seed brittle. What are you talking about? No, we're talking peanut brittle. Amen. We're talking walnut brittle sunflower seed. That, I just lost my train of thought. That disgusting sunflower seed brittle. I, ain't even, I don't even know, want to know who said it. We, we, don't, we eat peanut brittle because we're Pentecostals. The reason we clap and the reason we shout and the reason we run is because that's how God gets God in motion. Because we're Christians. It's because we are Christians. I said it's because we're Christians. Somebody said, well, I, I don't do that. Well, then you're not a Christian. Oh, that's really hard. Yeah, but it's really true. Because the Bible says that you are to clap in your hands. The Bible says you're to wave your hands. The Bible says you're to shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. The Bible says 16 times you got to dance before the Lord. The Bible says that you got to play them on the harp uh, and the cymbals and the high sounding cymbals and the organ and the flute. Uh, the Bible, that's why, because the Bible says it. And the Bible doesn't just say clap your hands when he makes a good point. It says clap your hands when you need victory. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. So she's making noise. Y'all can get off. She's making noise. She's worshiping God. And it is her worship. Remember this morning, sitting on the pew with your bad attitude doesn't move God. We learned Martha got a sermon. Mary got Jesus in motion. Come on. She, I don't want a sermon. I want him to move. I'm, I need something to change in my life. And he said, where, do, where, where did you lay him? Take me to the, the place that you put him. And then we found Mary, Martha. There she is. And he, he shows up. Uh, and, and he says, take away the stone. Move, move the stone. She said, I can't move the stone because by this time, he's already stinking. Right before the greatest miracles in our lives, he's going to ask you to do something that stinks. Whew, I touched it this morning, but I could spend all night there. Uh, I said, he's going to ask you to do something that stinks. That means it's something you don't like. Your senses don't like it. Woo! Hallelujah. I don't like it when he tries to get me to praise God. Go ahead and keep your brother in a tomb. Yeah. Then 
again, Jesus says in 1140, Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe that thou should see the glory of God? He said, Stop worrying about your nose. Stop worrying about your pride. And start worshiping and believing God. And then in 41... He says, they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. They took away. I talked to you about about this before, but these young people didn't hear it. Jesus didn't move the stone away. He demanded that they. Now, you're telling me you can raise the dead, but you can't move a stone? You know what I mean? Well, if it's God's will for me to shout, he'll reach down and jerk me by the. No, he won't. No, if it's God's will for me to lift my hands, he can lift my hands for me. No, he won't. If it's God's will that I run and dance, then you know what? He'll light my pew on fire. Trust me, if I've already lit some pews on fire here. Uh Uh-huh. I'll light them on fire. You guys get too lazy on it. Come on, somebody. I had a lady in Holland. I was pastoring. All we had were these hard wooden chairs. New convert. And I got up and I said, you know, church, all we have are these hard wooden chairs. I said, let's we need to get some padded chairs. And we need to raise some money for some padded chairs. And she came up to me at the church, Pastor, we don't need padded chairs. It's not like we're going to sit in them ever. <laughs> That's a new convert for you, you know what I mean? They don't care about the comfort of their backside. They're worried about giving God praise. I got to bless the Lord. I didn't come to sit. I came to bless the Lord. I can sit in my lazy boy. I got a massage chair at home. When I get to this place, it's where I come to shout. It's where I come to dance. It's where I come to worship. It's where I come on somebody. It's the house of prayer and praise. He, she, God said, no, I ain't going to lift your hands for you. You've got to do the possible so that I can do the impossible. But if you'll do the thing that stinks, I'll raise the dead. Sister Joni, if you'll do the thing that stinks to you, he'll open up the blind eyes and he'll raise the dead. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Hmm. When it stinks to me, it smells good to God. You remember that? I said, when it sacrifice stinks, you're burning up animals on, the, on an altar. Stinks to man. But God said, it smells good to me. When that means something good's about to happen, when you're starting to get into a messy situation. Amen? So they took away the stone from that place. Amen? Where the dead was laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou has heard me. Before he went on, he said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to make sure that everybody knows that God is going to get the glory. He said, I want them to know that God gets the glory. And I knew, verse 42, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said, he said, I know you're going to do what I said. I know it's going to happen. He said, but because of the people that are watching, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. You see what I'm saying? Pastor, why are you always saying we need to pray loud? So that when we walk out of this building, the people that are watching realize that wasn't the praise team that got the glory. It wasn't Pastor Tuttle that got the glory. You know who got the glory was this prayer meeting that took place uh, before you started. Uh, oh, that's why you lift up your voice and say, Father, you, <laughs> you are going to do something great here tonight. Father, you heal the blind. That way when the blind get healed, the visitors say, well, that wasn't the preacher. They were praying for that to happen. Uh, that wasn't the praise. See, that's why some people... People can't pray to God because they need the glory for themselves. But we're, uh, I'm going to lift my voice and say, deliver them. God, set them free. Hey, by the way, the visitors listening to me ask you for a healing. Come on, they're watching what you have. Come on. I've told God that before. I say, God, uh, if now if I do a bad job, that's me. If I don't preach good and everybody runs away, I'll take the blame. I said, but when you move the mountains and and when you raise the dead and when you set, I said, and by the way, I'm going to pray so loud a visitor can hear me. (laughs) Oh, because every visitor knows I can't move mountains. Pressure's on you, God. It's on you now. It's on you now. Come on, some of you afraid to put the pressure on God. I'm not. I say, Lord, move the mountain. Raise this man from the dead. We're not going to let hell get the glory of flesh that no flesh may glory. We've got to give God the praise. And when he had thus spoken, I think it's the next verse, yeah. And when he had thus spoken, he stuck his head into the tomb and whispered, 
When he, when he had thus spoken, after he got done praying in prayer meeting, he, he crossed himself. When he started counting beads. He just kind of bobbed his head and sat on the pew. Because after prayer meeting, <laughs> I don't like all the loudness. Well, probably because you don't want the dead to come out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry he didn't pray with a quiet voice he didn't send a whisper he said with a loud a loud loud that means the volume was up that means it pierced a loud voice a loud voice there was loudness come on why is he going? because death's got to hear him I said death, his ears are covered up with bandages and, and death can't, and that's how they're walking in. We're in a world that cannot hear. They can't see. They're blind. They are bound up. And we're going like this. Jesus really loves you and he can set you free. Come on. Devil can't read your thoughts. No, that's why he doesn't want you to be loud. That's why when it gets loud, yeah. Sixty times scripture it says loud. Sixty times. Loud. In heaven, guess what heaven's going to be? Oh, the Bible says it. It's going to be loud, baby. I'm just trying to get y'all's ears tuned for heaven. Someone said, oh, these are hurting my ears. No, 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 no. We've already done the science. It never gets to the place in this building where it will ever cause damage to your ears. You can take continual sound at the level at which we're performing preaching and performing for the rest of your life and nothing will happen to yours. Now when you're at the when you were at the rock concert and it was 140 decibels and your eardrum was up against you weren't saying, "Ooh, it's too loud." You're like <laughs> But then it's crazy. You get into a building where we don't even bump 100 decibels. Uh, it's too loud. You think it's really too loud or you think maybe there's something spiritual with sound? Or maybe it's just something that loud. How come the devil wants it loud and the church wants it quiet? I said, how come when you go to the disco and the bar and the club and the ball games, they're saying, shout, shout. And they say, everybody scream. Why? Why? Hell wants it loud. But then hell wants us silent. You walk into church house, shh, everybody be quiet. That's a, track, a, trip, a trick from hell. Because he knows that when death hears a loud, when death hears the sound of life, it can't stay dead no more. It's got to get up. They were praising him with a loud voice at the descent of the Mount of Olives. And in heaven, the angels are praising him with a loud voice. And at Eastgate United Pentecostal Church, when we go home, our voices are ripped up. We're sweaty in the brow because we praised him with a loud. We're letting hell know you're not going to have my family. I said, I'm letting death know you're not going to have my kids. I'm letting the world know we're still here. Well, well, the Bible says, the Bible says silent. Yep, the word silent is also in the Bible. Nine times. And here's what it says. 1 Samuel 2 and 9. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent. Uh, yeah, I'm just, hey, y'all are the one that brought up silent, not me. Yeah, you guys wanted to go there. To the end that my glory, there's Psalms. To the end that my glory may sing praises to thee. And yeah, silence in there. He says, but you're not supposed to be silent. <laughs> well, I just want to be quiet. Here, okay. When, Pastor, when can we just be quiet? Here's when you can be quiet. Psalms 31, 17. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let them be. 
That's when you can be silent, when you're in the grave. But I, but as long as there's breath in your lungs, there ought to be a sound of victory coming out of your mouth. He said you're to be loud and not to be silent. Lord, I'm lifting my voice. Young people, are, we're called to be a loud people, a noisy generation. Loud lets the enemy know we're here. Man, Brother Tingley preached good. Gideon, 300 people, up against probably 300,000 people. And what he want them to bring? A trumpet and a light bulb. <laughs> he said, Hey, we're here. We might be in lesser number, but we're not going to be lesser volume. <laughs> hey, hell. Hello, we're right here. We're not sitting in the corner. And if you can't hear me, turn on the light. I'm right here. I'm right here. Put the light. He said you are to sound forth the praise. And then he said you're to show forth the praise. Praise is visual. Praise is audible. There's sound in a show. And the show ain't for you. Don't be mistaken. We're not doing this for you. We're showing off for him. He went up to that tomb. He said, roll the stone away. Roll, roll it away. Roll the stone away. Roll it away. Now you've got to, like, open the door. Uh, we didn't, well, we didn't practice. You're doing good, though. Keep pushing all the way. No, it's going to close if you do that. You, gotta, you ain't expecting anybody to come out. There you go. You did your part. That wasn't that hard, was it? Why on earth are you complaining about it then all the time? Why is it so hard for you to get to do the possible? That wasn't that hard, was it? Martha, you made such a big deal about something that wasn't that hard. You know what you're going to do the minute you do run the aisles and get back to your seat? You're going to be going, man, that felt good. I ain't never seen somebody shout, dance, and praise God and get done saying, man, that was disappointing. Never. I've been doing this my whole life, 36 years. Come on, somebody. I haven't. Now, I've, I've met a lot of drug addicts and drunks, and they drink themselves, and when they're done throwing up in a... God, I don't know why I do that. I never met a Pentecostal like that. I've never met a Christian that was a shouter that woke up the next morning going, bleh, bleh, bleh. they woke up with a smile on their face. They might have been a little sore. I've been sore the next day, but I was smiling. <laughs> I had joy that I never had before. I had, oh, I know all my, all my coworkers are holding their head because they got a headache, but I'm holding my heart because the King of Kings living in it. Ah! And he went up, hey, Lazarus, come forth. Ah. Lazarus, come forth. So you know what some of you need to, someone needs to go to the door of your life and do, oh, of the impossible. Uh, you need to speak to the thing you think is dead with a loud, that means you expect something to happen. Not with the, see, whispering means you don't know if it's going to happen. But when you're talking loud, all the Jews are watching, all your haters are watching. Uh, what on earth is this dude do, talking into a tomb? He's lost his mind. <laughs> but what I, I want to do, come on, come on. I need, hey, come here, Adam. Come on, you need to look it through that door and you need to shout with a loud voice like you're expecting something. I wonder if I got somebody. Lazarus! Come for Come on, like you're saying it to the cancer. Like you're saying it to the. Woo! Lazarus! You ought to name your son and say, Billy, come forth. Come on, somebody. Joy, come forth. Hope, come. What you got to realize, though, is Lazarus is bound. You try to walk bound. That means after he said it, it took some time before Lazarus came forth. 
And it had to be in that segment of time where Lazarus, where they, they uh, it didn't happen. Uh, what an idiot, man. You screaming into a grave. You moron, their backs are turned to the grave. They don't even know. You. What are you thinking? There's people making fun of you because of what you've been proclaiming with a loud voice. Uh, but the thing you've been proclaiming uh, is dead. And it takes the dead a little longer to get there. But I promise you, it's on its way. It's on its way. It's on its way. Oh, there he is. Lazarus is going to come out of that there. Lazarus. Woo. Come on, somebody. There he is. There's the boy. There's the dream. There's the hope. There's the joy. There's the... Hold on. I didn't expect for it to look like that. Come on. When God does the supernatural, it's probably going to show up the way you don't expect it to show up. We want revival. It's probably going to come wrapped up in grave clothes, looking like somebody half dead, somebody messed up, ever lost their mind. They're probably going to sit down on your pew and don't say you want revival and then give them a bad attitude about it. That my pew, too late, should have got here earlier. And when they do take your pew, don't move to the pew behind them. Move to the pew in front of you. Use that as your excuse to move up. I know some of you can't move up because of your pride, but I've been praying a visitor will take your pew so you can tell all your friends, uh, I had to move because a visitor took my seat. God, I'm hoping it happens in every one of you. Get up on this front row and learn the power of the front row. They're going to come in, and they're going to look bad. They're going to look dirty. They ain't going to dress like. He, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Jesus, now, you could have had him in a three-piece suit. I was expecting a Hickey Freeman Super 150s with the Gucci shoes and an Armani tie. Come on, Jesus, what's this? I mean, we've been praying for God to send revival, and you're sending us drug addicts. And Come on, somebody. And they look different and smell funny. And I just don't like the way they did it. Did, did, did. Well, hey, hook it. Get on out of here. That's the kind of people God sends when you start talking in the grave. That's how dreams look when you start to, well, I didn't like the way he sent it. There's people messed up because you're complaining about how God's trying to bless you. When <laughs> he said, he said, now, see, God, could, could God have rolled away the stone? Absolutely. But he's not going to do the possible. He says, now it's your responsibility to unwrap him. The duty falls to you to clean him up. You got to teach him holiness. You got to teach him righteousness. You got to teach him how to worship. Because see, they've been bound up. They don't know how to shout. They don't know. He can't run. He can't shout. He can't lift his hands anymore. He's been dead. Because a dead person, you know how you can tell dead people in church? They sit like this. Dead in trespasses and sin. Lazarus, come forth. Uh, when they come out, uh, we start taking them by the hand and we teach them how to dance and teach them how to shout and teach them how to live. God said, I'm going to raise them. He said, but you're going to play a part. He says, you need to have your hands. You need to go home with something in your hand that will remind you that I can raise the dead. You need to have a death rag in your hand. You need to tuck it up in your wallet, pull it out at work and say, you ain't going to believe what this is. You, uh, you need to put it in your prayer closet, hang it up against the wall so every time the devil tells you you can't do it, come on, that, uh, that I can't heal you, that I can't heal you. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to let the devil know hey Bubba the dead still are being raised I wish I had somebody that needs a miracle that would run over here grab some death clothes and say I'm going to be a part of somebody's miracle I'm going to be a part of somebody's healing I'm going to be a part of somebody life being changed for the duty now falls to the church to un oh yeah 
Yeah, I'm not, I'm not giving you mine. Don't look like you go, you know, I ain't giving you mine. This is mine. I'm taking it home. I'm going to put it in my prayer closet. I'm going to lay it on place. What's that you got in your hand there, Martha? Oh, you ain't going to believe it. You... What's that you got wrapped around your neck, uh, uh, Mary? Oh, you ain't gonna believe it. You ain't gonna believe it. This used to be in a grave. The Somebody ought to wave a, a cloth and say, I got it off a dead man. I got it off a dead man. up here Mr. Lazarus and after the after the people of God got their hands on him that's what sin and death does they come in looking dirty and ratty but when you get the people of God and you get their hands and you start mixing that's why if you're new or if you're old you never stop mixing with the people of God Come on, because every once in a while, there's some cloth from the past gets up on your back and you don't even know it's there. That's why you come to church, because uh, there's a fellow praiser that says, hold on, bud, I got to get that off you. You ain't from that world no more. You ain't like, that's why you got a preacher that says, get up out of the aisle, Lazarus. Get in that altar and start worshiping God. Uh, you once were dead, but you're alive now. I wonder if I could just get somebody to praise God with somebody. You just ought to, oh, I wish I had a praiser that would rub off on a non-praiser. I wonder if there's a prayer warrior that'll rub off on a non-prayer warrior. Yeah. Take them off. Take, hey, church, take off the grave clothes. You can come dead, but you're going to leave alive. You're going to be looking better than you did when you walked in. Hallelujah. But the resurrection of Lazarus was not only for the benefit of the believer. It, it benefited the believer. You, you think Mary's worried now about anything? Now she's rejoicing. See, Bethany was the headquarters of the Sadducees. And the Sadducees believed that a man was not dead until he had been dead four days. They believed a man's body, his spirit departed on the fourth day. So if Jesus had raised him on the second day, the Sadducees would have said he was never dead. If he'd have showed up when Mary wanted him to show up and Martha wanted to show up, if he'd have listened to your plans, he said, I got to do this so that I get glory. <laughs> If he, if he did it the way you wanted it done, yeah, you would feel better, but he wouldn't get glory. And the, he said, so I, I need some people. I need, I need a family. I need a family that I can trust with a delay. I need a family that I can trust with a holding pattern. I need somebody that I can trust that I know when they're going through it, they're not going to curse me. They're going to bless me. I need somebody that I can trust with a, a temporary season of winter so that I can get glory out of it. Because I'm about to break a stronghold of false doctrine. But I need a church. I say, God, Eastgate United Pentecostal Church, put us in a holding pattern. And when they're, oh, when we're baptizing them by the thousands, we'll be giving you praise. And when we're not baptizing them, we'll give you praise. And when we got goosebumps, we'll roll on the floor. And when we ain't got no bumps, we'll roll on the floor. Because we love you. We love you. Woo! There's a revival that's coming to people he can trust with a delay. 
It might be delayed, but it's going to happen. And it's going to be so big that there ain't going to be an excuse for hell to throw your way, to talk you out. Oh, that wasn't really God, baby. It was. He was dead four days. Oh. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not dead. I'm just on a delay right now. Some of you been, come on, devil's tried to tell you your praise is dead. It ain't dead. You've just been going through some stuff. It's been through a little delay. But in the name of Jesus, I'm coming with a loud voice. And I say, praise, come up out of the grave. Praise, come up on. Maybe all you got now is a little patty cake. But we'll unwrap you. We'll unwrap you and you'll shout again. You'll leap again. You'll run again. So then the Jews, much people, John chapter 12 and 9, I, I'll finish it tonight, otherwise we ain't ever going to get through this. Much people of the Jews therefore knew. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there and they came not for, for who? Wow. They didn't come for Jesus. That's crazy. See, there's a lot of church, they got truth, they, 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 they got Jesus, but the world's looking for something. Oh, yeah, they need evidence. Ivider, Texas is full of people that believe in Jesus. But they, oh, they've experienced Jesus, but they're ready to see a Lazarus. <laughs> they're, they're ready to see... They came for Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Look at verse 11, because here's what's about to happen in Vider, Texas. And because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Come on. There's a lot of people looking at Jesus, but let me tell you what's going to bring their faith to Jesus is somebody that's been in a tomb grave, that's been bound up by grave clothes, uh, that had the patience and the trust to say, God, I don't know what you're doing, uh, but keep doing it. And it is that one day, ladies and gentlemen, that, that they're coming. They're not coming to see Matthew Tuttle preach. They're not coming to see Sister Tuttle sing or Sister Drea play. They're coming to see you. You got to be kidding me. You're Josh Rich? Oh my goodness. What on earth? I gotta go see the place. You used to be bound up. You used. <laughs> you know what? I want the reputation of Eastgate. I was preaching Friday night at a men's conference in Louisiana, and they came up to me. Somebody, some guy came up to me. He said, Eastgate, he said, man, I know about that. He says, that's where that Mandy lady, go. where's Mandy? That's where Mandy lady. I said, how do you know about Mandy? Well, she used to be an atheist, but she came to God at Eastgate. I said, well, I was kind of hoping you knew about Eastgate because of the great preaching. <laughs> and then there's that, the guy that says, oh yeah, Eastgate, that's, that's home of the Stevie and that's home of the shout. And Eastgate, oh yeah, that's where that, that guy went that was addicted to drugs and got set free. And that, hey, I don't want to be known by the quality of our singing. And I don't have to be known by the revelatory preaching that I preach. But let the witness of Eastgate, let it be this. This is the place where Lazarus came forth. This is the home where the dead rise. This is the place where the lame walk. This is the home of the dance. This is the place where old time revival happened. It's that place. It's that place. It's that church you go if you got a dead boy. It's that church you go if you got a lame daughter. It's those people. They know how to get people out of the grave. They know how to get people... Come on, somebody, do I have anybody that wants to get them up out of the grave? Dance with me, Brother Andrew. I wonder if I could just get somebody to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble will hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah.
I'm done. Here's what we're going to do. Something's about to come out of the grave. <laughs> Here's what you're about to do. I need you to get something in your mind that's been in the grave long enough where you know it's dead. You're going to pray. We're going to pray. And God's going to give you something. Something you're missing. A praise, a dance, a song, a person. Come on. Something you lost. You think it's gone. You've already just said, you know what, that's how it's going to be. It could be your health. It could be your joy. It could be your dance. It could be your shout. It could be a ministry. I don't know what you need to come to life tonight, but it's going to come to life. But you, I'm not talking about something that you just kind of lost last week. I'm talking about something that's been there a while. We're about to play some music so loud that nobody's going to hear what you scream. But I'm going to have you, after we pray, we're going to cup our hands together. And we're going to shout to whatever it is, and we're going to name it. And you're going to say, come forth. And it's going to come forth tonight. I believe some ministries are going to be re resurrected tonight. I believe some joy, peace, health. Marital peace, whatever it is, my marriage, God, bring, bring, bring it back the way you promised it. Ah, it's going to come. It's going to come. You've been in a holding pattern, flying, circling over the promise long enough. Now it's time for it to come to life. Uh, and the only thing it's waiting on is to hear your voice shout its name uh, under the power. But first we're going to pray, and we're going to ask God, and we're going to tell him, God, when you bring it out, I'm going to give you the glory. Uh, hands are lifted across the building uh, right now. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we come to you, and I Thank you. Oh God, I thank you that what you're about to do in this place, Father, I'm going to cry and we're going to call forth revival in what they say is a burnt field, in a place where everybody knows Pentecost and no one will come. Father, when they come, we will give you the glory. In the field they say has been over harvested, when they fill the tabernacle with praise, wall to wall worship, Father, it is then that you will get the glory. It will not be by my might. It won't be because of the good preaching. It won't be because of great singing. It'll be because you showed up in the middle of our mess. It'll be because you appeared when there was nothing that seemed possible. And so it is when we shout, Father, we're expecting Lazarus to come out in the name of Jesus. Here's what I need some people to join me in shouting. Some of you are going to shout your stuff. If you don't know what to shout, you're going to shout revival. Come forth. Look at your neighbor and say, if you don't know what you're going to shout, we're going to shout revival, come forth. Revival, come forth. Harvest, come forth. We're about to shout it on the count of three. Now, some of you are going to name some kids. and Some of you are going to name some family members. Some of you are going to name your husband. and Some of you are going to name your wife. And after you begin to shout it, after you've shouted it, I want you to begin to give God praise all across this building. And we're going to worship God on this Sunday night like only Eastgate people know how to do it. Only Christians know how to do it with a loud voice. Now, this isn't going to be something passive. All fear is gone. Lay your hand on your heart right now say I rebuke you spirit of fear be gone spirit of insecurity be gone boldness baptize me with boldness uh, and a confidence uh, to declare that uh, which has been promised to me uh, to my city to my community to my family on the count of three you're gonna shout oh revival come forth are you ready? Are you ready? Come on, we need some music. I don't, they're going to be embarrassed. Some of them to shout what they need to shout. You're going to be covered up with Zilal. That's playing of melodies on, on stringed instruments. It's, it's praise. On the count of three. One, hell, we're coming for you. We're coming for every child that's backslidden. We're coming for every sinner. Two. We're coming for every drug addict. We're coming for every prostitute. We're coming for every broken home and heart. We're coming up, and you're going to come out. One, two, three. Revival! Come forth! Don't stop. Don't stop shouting. Don't stop giving Him praise. Don't stop giving Him worship. 
Shandaya, 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 Shanda